am Alan Lassell, HVAC and Protein Skimmer Design Engineer, and I am here today to present to you the new evolution in Protein Skimmer Design Technology with this automatic EVO 7000 Z1 Protein Skimmer designed in the same era as the iPhone 11, similar to this phone here. And I am going to be giving you a side-by-side -side, in sump demonstration of this new technology compared to this classic old-school protein skimmer design you see here with the red handle shutdown valve on the exhaust port, the speed controller, an air silencer, and an intake port for the pump on the side. It was actually developed in the mid-90s, the same era as this Ronda Neon phone was developed. Now the comparison of these two phones, as you know, is quite dramatic. You can only just tell the iPhone what you want it to do. Call it Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. The difference between these two protein skimmer designs is just as dramatic as you will see shortly in the next section. But right now I want to answer a common question that I always hear and that is what does a protein skimmer do and what do I need one for? Think of your protein skimmer as a cat litter box for your aquarium. It serves the same purpose by keeping your aquarium environment free of toxic sewage waste just like your cat litter box does. It isolates and removes all the fish poop and pee, as well as uneaten food, out of the living environment that will otherwise create ammonia, nitrites, and nitrates that are extremely harmful to your fish and invertebrates in your aquarium. As you can see on the screen here, these are all the internal parts of this new design. Now that you have seen all the internal parts of this protein skimmer design, you're probably asking yourself, how does it work, right? As I will demonstrate to you in a minute, it incorporates a brand new control system that utilizes the laws of physics that allows the automatic EVO 7000 Z1 protein skimmer here to instantaneously and flawlessly self-adjust to its surrounding environment without the need of human intervention, much like a living organism does, that is called Integrated Automatic Control System, or IACS for short. As you will see, you may think it works like magic and it's hard to believe it's for real, but I assure you it is. Let's take a look at the Azu 2500 liter per hour water pump that's in my hand here. It goes in the Evo 7000 Z1 protein skimmer and specifically at the exhaust port as you can see here in the diameter of that where the water comes out and compare it to the exhaust port on this protein skimmer design that's in my other hand here and as you can see they're nearly identical in size meaning that there are 0% water flow restrictions allowing 2500 liters per hour of water flow through the skimmer regardless of the sump take water level as I will be showing you in a minute. Now with 0% flow restriction combined with siphon tube technology, when I put these two tubes together, like so, creates a siphon, where the water comes in through these slots in the side of the outer tube, flows up to the top, and then back down the inside tube and out the bottom that literally pulls the water out of the skimmer as it creates its own source of power, magnifying the flow of water. This goes through the skimmer. The internal water level of your protein skimmer determines the rate of removal of sewage foam, also known as skim mate, and is expressed in percentages of efficiency. Now the 100% efficiency set point is when the sewage foam slowly and continuously flows out of this chamber here, up into the collection container here, and collected in here, without ever flooding this section, because if it does, it will force all the previously collected raw sewage back into your aquarium, very bad, like sewage coming out of your toilet. Now this set point is unique to your specific bio load of your aquarium. Now people ask, what is my bio load? To better understand what your bio load is, I am going to give you a quick demonstration here using melted vanilla ice cream and root beer. I am going to take two teaspoons and put it in this first cup, three tablespoons into this second cup, and then I'm gonna add root beer. 
Now the ice cream is going to foam up and rise to the top just like sewage foam in a protein skimmer. The top of this tube and the top of this glass is what we call the flood point or better known as the danger zone. The vanilla ice cream represents your bio load of fish poop and pee in your aquarium. I am going to take two teaspoons and put it in this first cup to represent a small bio load and three tablespoons into this second cup to represent a large bio load. Now I'm going to add root beer to demonstrate the difference in bio loads. Notice the difference in liquid soda level of the two different bio loads. You'll see the larger bio load has a taller foam column. In your skimmer, you set the internal water level according to the size of your bio load foam column. The automatic EVO 7000 Z1 has a vast range of bio load adjustment to accommodate a wide range of bio load applications. This vertical float adjustment determines your bio load. You slide it up for a smaller bio load and you slide it down for a larger bio load. And for an extremely large bio load, simply add the extension. Once you determine your 100% efficiency set point, adjust accordingly. Once you set it, you do not want it to be altered by the change in water levels and conditions in your sump tank and aquarium that typically happens in the classic old school protein skimmer design as I will demonstrate. The micro bubble chamber here in my hand is considered the engine of the protein skimmer, also referred to as the scrubbing bubbles processor. This is where the proteins are actually collected and transported to the foam column at the top and it is measured by its volume in liters from now on referred to as the engine processor. Now the automatic EVO 7000 Z1 has a 6 inch wide cylinder shape, has an impressive 5.5 liter engine processor with an adjustable stock bio load of 5.5 inches that can be extended even further. Now it is also equipped with a filter pad here in my hand as you can see in the skimmer here that serves two separate purposes. First of all, it prevents micro bubbles from ever escaping the skimmer, getting into your aquarium, which would be very bad. And secondly, it traps larger particles, too large to be removed by the micro bubbles. By design, cone shaped skimmers have considerably smaller volume micro bubble chambers, also known as engine processors, because they are so narrow. So if you're running a cone shaped fat boy, do the math to calculate the liters of volume, and if you don't know how, you can Google it. I have been a saltwater aquarium hobbyist since the land before time, long before protein skimmers were ever invented. It was around 1983 when I bought my first 75 gallon TrueView plexiglass aquarium. Now some of you may remember back in the day when all we had were canister filters to filter our water which didn't remove ammonia, nitrites, or nitrates. Then later we got what they called the wet-dry biological filters that you would wait months for algae to grow on these bio balls in the hopes that it would remove the ammonia, nitrites, and nitrates when the water filtered through them. The mortality rate was horrendous, as I recall. Then, in 1994, a guy named Chen patented the first vertically shaped protein skimmer, similar to this here. Now the immersed water level was your internal water level, meaning if you immersed it in this much water, that would be the internal water level.
Then in the year 2000, Jason Kim received a patent adding a ball valve to the exhaust port, just like this one in my hand, just like so to a box-shaped protein skimmer. Now for the first time, you could control the internal water level by partially closing the ball valve, creating back pressure to the water that was exiting the protein skimmer. As you can clearly see, the only difference, if any, in functionality between the two patents and the current models that you either own or see for sale today are the different valve types on the exhaust ports that replace this ball valve in my hand that are attached here. Other than that, the design is identical with a slightly different twist in the contour. Now in regards to this old skimmer design, Mr. Saltwater Tank has a video called setting up a cone protein skimmer and five minutes into it explains to let the cone skimmer run two to three days break in time before attempting to set the internal water level otherwise it can overflow the collection container which is very bad but don't worry i have already done so in advance so we should be good to go here today now for this demonstration i have the same azu 2500 water pump in both of these skimmers. So let's go ahead and get this skimmer ready for the water. I'm going to put a short uh, stove pipe on there and then the silencer on the air intake. And we'll get this sucker in the water. And we'll just wait for the water level to get above the exhaust of the pump and turn the water on. And it'll take a minute for the internal water level to rise to a point where it'll stop rising. The internal water level is based on the height of the stovepipe. Now typically a stovepipe looks like this, where you can adjust the height of it, and that will adjust the internal water level of the skimmer. Another example of valves used on these skimmers looks more like this, where it has a, a knob on top of a shaft that connects to the base and it have a plus and minus on the top to rotate. So you would rotate plus or minus, would increase and decrease the water level with a valve that you can't see inside. It just uh, opens and closes the gate valve. Uh, another type of valve that are also used with skimmers is the guillotine valve. And this is just an example here of a guillotine valve. And another common one is the faucet valve, like this one here in my hand, which is right now in the open position. And so I'm going to go ahead and add this to the skimmer here and watch the internal water level rise as I add this. Because the, the exhaust port is now higher, it's going to make the internal water level rise that much higher as well. And it does take a minute to actually settle and stop rising. And some protein skimmers use digital controllers to help assist the valve to modulate the internal water level. If you turn it from maximum high down to like medium, you're slowing the pump down to close to half the uh, liters per hour that it's putting out. And that will lower the internal water level and then that way you can increase to a higher amount to have the ability to raise the internal water level as well. So these I don't advise because they reduce the amount of uh, liters per hour that your pump is actually putting out. Now some brands have valves on the air intake and I didn't uh, bring one for this, previous, for this example, but if I put my finger on the, the intake, 
you notice the water level rises very quickly and then it will drop back down when I let my finger back off just to show you how the air intake affects the internal water level. So I'm going to go ahead and, and turn this off and prepare the automatic for the water and then that way we can get our side-by-side -side comparison. But first let me turn this all the way around so you can see for yourself that there are, are no external controls on this proton skimmer design. It was in 2015 that a guy named James A. Vassallo patented a protein skimmer with self-regulating internal water level control, also known today as Integrated Automatic Control System, or IACS for short. In, in the summer of 2019, he finally solved the mystery behind this new technology, unlocking its true potential bringing you today the new age protein skimmer design, the automatic Evo 7000 Z1 protein skimmer in front of me here today. I can tell you he's a single, well-educated, honest man, an overall really great guy, and always a pleasure to talk to. So if you're ever in the Seattle area and get a chance to meet him, I highly encourage you to do so. So let's go ahead and turn on the classic skimmer here. And I'm gonna let the internal water level rise near the sticker. And I wanna point out, watch the micro bubbles in the chamber here. You'll see them work their way down towards the exhaust port and they'll start coming out the flow here and into the sump tank. Many models on the market today have this problem where the micro bubbles end up back in the sump tank that can get back into your aquarium. So let's go ahead and put the automatic skimmer in the tank. And I'll let that water level rise above the exhaust on the pump before I turn it on. Okay, so now I want you to watch the internal water level on the classic old school skimmer here as it will change. As this one fills up, you'll see this one drop down. Notice there's no real micro bubbles in the automatic yet. And all of a sudden the micro bubbles come on. And as you see, the internal water level has dropped on this classic old school skimmer. So I'm going to uh, attempt to do something that's never been done before. And that's adjust the internal water level on one of these classic old school torch and skimmer designs. So as I turn the exhaust port, you'll notice the internal water level will rise slowly. And as I close this valve, the flow of water out of the skimmer of course will slow down. You notice the automatic here is 
already at a point where it's just about ready to start skimming skim mate. There's not much skim mate in this water, but there is some. And you can see the internal water level now is still rising. And I may have to back this off at some point. These old school skimmers actually can take days, literally, to set the internal water level according to people that I have talked to. So I'm here to just show you how it's done. And it's, it's almost now at the point where we don't want it to go any higher. So I'm gonna back this off just a little bit. It's going back down, so I'm gonna Tightened up a little bit more. So if this had been 
collect your sewage for say four or five days and I had not uh, inter intervened, this would have flooded all the sewage back into the aquarium sump tank, which would get back into the aquarium through the, uh, the pump that's in the sump tank, which would be very bad. It's like sewage coming out of your toilet into your house. So as you can see, we're back to skimming here on the automatic. And so I'm gonna take a quick pause for half a second and I'll be right back. Now I wanna show you just how hypersensitive these classic old school protein skimmers really are. I'm gonna add this much water and I want you to watch the internal water level in this skimmer, which is right there, as you can see it. And we'll give it a give it a few seconds to see what happens. And as you can see, it's already rising up. Now it is higher than it was by a simple, I don't know, three cups of water. It's crazy. It's even going up. It's still continuing to rise. That's why it's so difficult to get these classic old school skimmers can actually collect skin mate without flooding it all right back into your aquarium over the next several days. Now next I want to explain and show you that with these skimmers you want to turn the power off before you remove the collection container to empty them. Because otherwise you just end up with a mess. See the water spills over. I'm going to dump some of this out. put this back on. So now I want to show you an example of the airflow in these skimmers. Notice the holes that are in the lids of these type skimmers so the air can come back out. Imagine that your collection container is half full of sewage. Now as you already know, the air comes in through the air silencer, turned into micro bubbles, flows up into the collection section, and it comes out through these holes on top. This is the raw sewage smell that you're gonna smell in your house. Oh my God, it smells bad. So that's what you're smelling coming out of your aquarium. Now also remember that this water is 100% full of humidity because it's just been through the micro bubble chamber. So this is creating humidity issues probably in your house you don't even know about. It may cause your windows to steam up in your house, much like the windows in the car or the movie the Titanic where Leonardo and DiCaprio and Kate Winslet were doing it in the back seat of that car. Remember that scene? When he slaps that window of the car afterwards? Well, that could be what's happening in your house and why you're seeing so much condensation in your house. Now, if that's not bad enough, combine that with the stank of your collection container, that's really not a good thing. So, now I wanna show you what happens when we lower the water level in the uh, aquarium. Oh, did I mention that the air being pulled in pulls in all the contamination in your house as well? Whether you're having uh, a cooking fire or whether it's a stove top or an oven fire or a microwave fire, all that highly toxic smoke gets sucked into your skimmer and into your water contaminating your aquarium. So these kind of skimmers can actually end up killing your aquarium if you ever have, heaven forbid, a small fire nearby or just even a kitchen fire or a microwave fire. So, so now I am going to uh, lower the water level and show you an example of siphon technology.
that I had previously described is in this design. Okay, so I have a siphon tube already pre-primed. There is the water in the siphon tube which goes into the bottom of the tank. So I can siphon that water and I'm going to show you how the water level as it drops, how uh, this style skimmer will start pulling in air into the side intake of that pump. Also keep an eye on the water level, on the internal water level of this automatic Tokyo skimmer. Watch the, uh, the inches increment on the uh, front of the aquarium as the water level drops. And watch for the air to start getting sucked into the side pump on this aquarium. Uh, Function skipper model. So it looks like we're coming down to three inches of water. She is pulling in air, so I turned that one off. So now we're just gonna see how low we can go here with the automatic. And just watch the internal water level on this skimmer. Okay, well looks like we're at three inches now. As you can see, the second technology is lifting water out of this aquarium, clear it up this high, and then back into a, my bucket down here. And this technology is pulling the water literally out of this aquarium, just like I told you the automatic uses to pull the water out of the skimmer with the second tube technology, creating its own force to aid the water pump to create an even faster flow of water through it. Okay, so now we're down to one and a half inches. And we have no change in the internal water level of the automatic. And I'm gonna stop the water flow in there now. And as you can see, the automatic operates flawlessly and down to one inch of water without any internal water level change. So now I'm gonna add water back into the aquarium. So I'm using a water pump here to put the water back.
and I'm going to continue to add water just to show you how the automatic EVO 7000 Z1 protein skimmer doesn't care what water level it's in. It will always operate and maintain its internal water level accordingly. Let's see, we're at eight, a little over eight inches of water. And the way you identify the water level is by disconnecting this hose. And when the water level drops, if it drops below this seam of these two sections, which it's going to, which it's doing, that means we're not exceeding the internal water level or the external sump tank water level. And so as you see, it's still dropping. And so I'm gonna add more water. Unplugging the heater. And as you can see, we still have room for even more water. And we'll give it a second here to, to settle. Looks like we're at ten and a half inches, and that's probably just about right. So that means I can add this back on here, and it operates flawlessly up into ten inches of water, down to one inch of water. So now. Let's say we have a power outage. What happens to the automatic during a power, as many people ask me? Well, let's find out. Now the power goes out. And the automatic Evo 7000 Z1 goes into a state of suspended animation where the water level does not drop, it defies gravity. And it will wait until the power comes back on and will not be affected and all your uh, proteins that are still in the container will remain in the container to, until the pump comes back on. It's sort of a hibernation state. So I'm gonna go ahead and just turn it back on to show you. It resumes within three seconds, back to its normal procedures. Now the automatic EVO 7000 Z1 has a closed loop air recirculation system, meaning the same air is recirculated over and over through itself by feeding the air from the collection container into the pump, which returns, returns it back to the collection container under pressure because it is sealed and so the source back to the pump is under pressure, enhancing the airflow, increasing the micro air bubbles that it generates. This also explains why it is so much quieter than the old school protein skimmer designs, because there are no air suction sounds like you get from the silencer on these old school ones, and you don't have any hissing sounds that, from the air escaping out of the skimmers as well or any water flows back into the sump tank. 
You'll notice that there are no micro bubbles escaping out of the Evo 7000 Z1 either. The filter pad prevents any of that from happening. For any of you that have owned a protein skimmer that allowed the bubbles to get back into your aquarium, they attach themselves to the front of the glass of your aquarium, distorting the view of your fish and invertebrates. Very bad. Another cool feature with the automatic is the this was a customer's idea, is that if you disconnect the hose and remove the lid, you can actually add dosing right into the sump tank, like this Reef Advantage Calcium. And by adding it into the skimmer and leaving the hose disconnected for an hour or so, dilutes the dosage so you have no shock risk to the fish and invertebrates in your aquarium. The automatic EVO 7000 Z1 has no exhaust port restricting flow valves, no air intake ports, no silencers, no sucking sounds, no speed controllers, no DC pump required, no stank sewage air spewing out of sewage container, 0% humidity dispersed, no skimmer break-in period, start skimming in minutes right out of the box, no risk of airborne contamination, no narrow operated in some tank water levels, operates in one inch up to ten and a half inches after a few weeks. No need to turn off power to empty the collection container, simply just disconnect the hose to empty. That will increase the length of time that your pump will last because you do not turn the pump off except when you have to disassemble to clean the unit. You can expect 100% efficiency internal water level automatically achieved in minutes. Completely separates the risk of flood point from the point of 100% efficiency. Always effectively performing right out of the box regardless of changing some tank water levels. You can even now pour in your nutrients into this protein skimmer for dosing to dilute them to reduce stress on your fish. This new technology is a major game changer in the saltwater industry and some people are saying it makes the old school design obsolete. But I'll let you decide that for yourself. The automatic EVO 7000 Z1 with its integrated automatic control system or IACS for short is simplicity at its finest. In life, simpler is always better than complicated, right? So to simplify your life with an automatic EVO 7000 Z1 Protein Skimmer in your sump, go to automatic.com and you can purchase them right there on the website. These skimmers are all handmade in the US and take time to make so there are limited quantities available until the new factory is completed. So please be patient if they are currently stocked out. Check the website for availability. To inquire about automatic skimmers for saltwater swimming pools, desalinization systems, or pharmaceutical applications, please send an email addressed to James A. Vassallo from the contact page. Remember, friends don't let friends buy junk. Let your friends know about this video, send them a link. Also, there is a QR code here on the screen that you can click on. Focus your phone camera on the QR code to read the link. Just tap on the link to open it to go to automatic.com. There's also a link provided below. Now to contact James A. Vassallo or inquire about other questions you may have about the automatic products, simply go to contact page and send an email from there. Thank you for watching this video. Please click the thumbs up icon below if you enjoyed this video or found it entertaining and educational. Also, your comments are very much appreciated. Click on the red subscribe button below to receive notice of future videos. And don't forget to share this video with your friends and others that would find this information interesting and educational. And finally, I want to give a huge shout out to Greg Cameron for supplying the wonderful music for this video, as well as give a huge shout out to my brother Phil Vassallo and Dan Rogers for all your help and support. 
Thank you for watching this video and good night.